Is it? Is it? Good evening, Nzansi, and welcome to your hump day edition of Trending SA right here on SAPC3. Do you know what I call that? Range. Did you hear that accent? <laughs> <laughs> we are ready to serve you all the latest trends and topic with the right amount of sauce and spice. I am the Emperor of Umlazi, the leader of the Shade Room, and helping me do the most is someone that has been your Women Crush Wednesday since the late 70s. She's gorgeous, outspoken, it's King Loot. Can you imagine being from the 70s and looking like this? How amazing am I? Shout out GQ. Oh, he's a, <laughs> he is the man that brings you all things flavor, Mr. Mnandi himself, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. It's the king of prime time, more flavor. I'm always on, I'm always on, like that battery that never runs out of power. How's my bar? How's okay. my bar? Okay. Okay. Whoa, whoa. How am I Terrible. doing, baby? Okay. <laughs> Wow, wow. In that, fact, I'm over my 70s moment. Like that, that was terrible. Sheesh, guys, on that <laughs> terrible note, it's time for Top Trends. All right, so earlier this week, we covered the NAC sit-down where a group of artists and arts organizations protested about the blowing of 300 million rand. This is the presidential employment stimulus. Now, new evidence has come to the fore, which alleges that Kwaito King and serial entrepreneur Athama Fukate has benefited unduly from the National Arts Council Artist Relief Program. Yo! Mm. So according to Daily Sun, and I want you guys to really listen to me right now because this list is quite hectic, all right? We're going to start here. Number one, um, Triple Nine Music got one million rand. His other company, Roadshow Marketing, got two million rand. Queendom, which is a company owned by Arthur's daughter, Owami, got 719,070. Oh, I just pulled a weird number there. Mm. Number four, a black technical production company owned by Arthur and his son, Nasiho, got another 800,000 and then some. And then SAADA gave him 1.9 million rand in a company that he is chairman of alongside his sisters and Chomi. That's wild. You think that's wild? It was wild until the Minister of Arts and Culture said this. The National Arts Council is taking action against senior officials implicated in the mismanagement of funds. It's been reported that the 300 million earmarked to be dispersed to artists during the pandemic has disappeared. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this I'm not getting. Action and things being... Because I remember on Monday, mm -hmm. we spoke to a member of the ANAC Council, Dr. Sipo Sitore, and this is what he had to say. So the NSC sit down has been going on for nearly two weeks now, with some protesters uh, sleeping at the office. Is there an actual resolution in sight? And what does that resolution look like? Th thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first, let me just say one thing, that there's been no money looted out of the presidential stimulus uh, employment uh, program. There was no, there is 300 million rands that was allocated. That 300 million rands is still there and it is still being allocated. Hmm. The, the, the status uh, should have told us. I am like so confused. Somebody needs to balance me because he says something completely different on my radio show this morning. The minister is saying something else about how money has gone missing and funds need to be raised. And we are left with what? Confusion? I mean, what is going on here? But genuinely, guys, let's actually talk about it. Like in cases like this, um, you know, where NAC artists' relief money has been given out inappropriately, who do we actually blame? You know what I mean? Because the conversation is going two, three ways right now. I just, you know what I hate with these situations? It reminds me when we get a report from the airport that one million rands of, uh, one million rands worth of drugs has been busted at the airport. And you know, Guti, if they busted one million, it, mean, it means, Guti, there's 70 million that came right. through. Right. And now we are all focusing on Nuata. And I think that's about, what, five, five million that is around him. Mm -hmm. And we are forgetting that, guys, there is 300 million that is unaccounted for, and that is problematic, and we need to, make, we need to find that money. And while there's the blame game going on, yeah. are we going to blame the NAC membership, some of whom have been suspended? We're going to blame the Arts and Culture Ministry. We have artists, some of whom haven't received the funds, just battling away, waiting for weeks and months on end while this is being resolved. And what happens in the meantime? Where are they going to get money to take care of themselves? I mean, their livelihoods have been turned upside down. Mm. It is ridiculous. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's also a, like the parts of the rural areas, you know what I sure. mean? Sure. don't have access to this money at all. Exactly. And it's interesting you say that because Dr. Sipostole said that this morning. He said they're battling to access the artists that are in remote areas in the country. And that in itself is a big problem. I mean, why are we still grappling with something like that? 
It's unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable. And I, I, this thing is very painful because there are people that actually sat through the pandemic that didn't have anything to eat. And yet there are fat cats out there that were busy stealing money. And see, I fool now. We want it back. So we all know that media tabloids tend to dip their hands in the clickbait jar here and there. But this recent article by a prominent online media outlet set Twitter ablaze. This is from Times Live. They say, former teacher who once coached Sia Kolisi arrested in Australia on charge porn rap. I can't even. Sensationalist journalism is often viewed with disdain across the spectrum. In fact, one would argue that clickbaiting is a reflection of bad journalism. But genuinely, genuinely, why do media outlets continuously choose this route when reporting on stories? This is incredible. Like, mm. I mean, how often have we heard about, you know, print media suffering less and less people buying the publications and therefore less and less people reading? Mm. And the same can be said about, you know, these online publications. And when you think about it, a lot of people now rely on social media platforms like Twitter right. for news. Mm. And why not then sensationalize your articles in your publication just so that you can get more eyes? As wrong as it is, but I think that's part of the reason why this happens. 100%. I, I, I get you, Mo, and I really understand because we've heard over the years, see their sales are dwindling and things are happening. My problem, I want to speak to a, a tweet that Comrade Sipo actually said. Comrade Sipo said, you understand how search engines work, right? What do you think is going to happen now when people search for Sia Kolisi? This horrific crime has got nothing to do with him, nothing whatsoever. And that's what I hate because exactly this this person is now a global brand. And you're going to go on social on, on, on a search engine and look for his name and this is going to show up. And then it goes back to your point more where you talk about the fact that people just consume news on, twi on Twitter and don't even read the actual articles. Mm. So there's probably a kid in England or Beirut somewhere sitting thinking Sia Kolisi is implicated in a porn scandal, a and child also, pornography scandal. And I also think the worst part of it is, is that online there are no rules, there's no regulation, mm. there's no, there's no, there's no uh, like way to box everything in so you know that okay cool this is what you can do and this is what you can't do. Print media was completely different but now online you can say anything mm. about anyone. I mean, mm -hmm. if I think about the things that have been said about our favorite public figures, like I saw this one article from uh, Sunday World, just the line saying, lucky stars smile on DJ Zindle's Bay murder, bongs after serious fall. This has nothing to do with Zindle. Mm -hmm. They have decided because they pry into her private life, they pry into everything that she does, that this is what they want to do, to pull in people so that they can read a story about somebody who is possibly her person, Probably not even, but because she is the bigger brand, has the most, I don't know, but likes and, and people are interested, they want to pull it in. It's disgusting. And, and it's scary how other publications will bandwagon. And I saw a tweet about two hours ago from The Citizen putting a picture of Sia Kulisi there when the story has absolutely nothing wow. to do with wild. it. It is wild. Mm. Sure. So um, since the establishment of the state capture inquiry almost about four years ago, we've seen jaw-dropping confessions testimonies, entertaining moments. I mean, it's all happening. And in the latest moment that made its way onto the timeline, hashtag Dalimpofu along with hashtag shut up, we're trending. Of course, this is after advocate Dalimpofu, who is representing Tom Moyani at the inquiry, told public enterprise minister uh, Praveen Gordon's legal counsel, advocate Michelle LaRue, mm -hmm. this. Whew. Allegation. Okay, I'm on the floor. Really, I can't stand this. Okay. This cannot okay. be happening okay. for the third time. Ms. Leroux must shut up when Mr. I'm speaking. Let okay? me just hear this. Yo. Must you yeah. just hear? You too, Mr. Kodan. So, so I'm still on the, the, on the floor. Phew, so the video has led to mixed reactions with political analyst uh, Lukanyo Vangma weighing in with this saying advocate Dalim Pofu needs to apologize for his conduct towards advocate Luru. His behavior was unacceptable and cannot be accepted in a country battling uh, the scourge of sexism and abuse of women. It's unacceptable behavior. While EFF's Floyd Jivambu came to advocate Mpofu's uh, defense, excuse me, using, the, uh, using this particular video to compare the different scenarios. Check this. And shut up, you stay lazy and, and listen. You look around the, the world. Order, please. I order. want you to shut up. Oh, I really order. do want you to order. shut up. President. Because order. We also had uh, Donald Daile who outlined the following and said before advocate Mpofu told advocate LaRue to shut up, he raised two things. The first being the fact that advocate LaRue was interrupting him for the third time. The second being that he allowed her to raise her objections without any interruptions from him. It's really important in our criticism to also address his protestations too. 
I, I, Lutz, I see everything that's happening on that video. The one thing that I want to address that I saw on that video that's problematic is the advocate's body language. We are in a country, as you say, there's lots of sexism and GBV and there's this ill treatment of women. I had to learn, I had to unlearn that as a male, when I speak or have a debate or an exchange with a woman, there's, I have to control my body language because even doing this is threatening behavior. Mm -hmm. I have to control the tone of, of my voice because the bass in my voice right. is also threatening behavior. So mm -hmm. those are the things that I had to unlearn. So I'm mindful of those things. And I saw something very problematic in the way that he was addressing her and his body language. And for me, I can't look away from that because of the color of her skin. Right. If I'm going to say I'm against GBV and sexism, I'm going to have to point that out. I saw it. To be honest with you, and mm. you're the first man I've mm. heard ever mm. in my entire lifetime mm. break it down like yeah. that, or even acknowledge the fact that mm. body language can be threatening. Mm. But I've also become very desensitized to how women are treated and mm. how women are spoken to. But I will say, if you interrupt me three times <laughs> while I'm speaking, I really might say more than shut up. <laughs> I really might. I mean, we're dealing here with Advocate Dalimbofu, who has sat in many a courtroom, many a setting similar to this. And in that moment, he almost broke rank yeah. from being an advocate. He knows <laughs> how you should behave in a setting like that, mm. showing respect towards your colleague and the commission. But I think they were just so dali. Also, Mo, if he had a problem, talk to the chairman. Address Bega, now you say you're, you're emotional right now, yeah. you're stuttering. See how it happens. It's very quick. <laughs> Speaking of that, we're going on a quick ad break. We have more trends and topics coming your way. Remember, we are giving away five gigs of data daily to keep you connected. So check out our social media pages for more information. Hashtag TSA on three. We'll see you in a bit. Welcome back to Hashtag Tsar on 3. So our friend on the show, political analyst and social commentator, Mighty Jamie, joins us now to give us a fresh viewpoint on the next trends that made their way onto the timeline. Jamie, I hope you're ready. <laughs> I'm ready, let's do it. Okay, so this is where we're gonna start, right? With the Zondo Commission racing against the clock, they have to obtain as much evidence as possible before the state capture um, inquiry you know, comes to an end, I think later on in the year. Hashtag Ramaphosa pops up on the timeline. This is after the state capture commission shared this very interesting tweet. So Deputy Chief Justice says he has determined the dates for President Ramaphosa to appear before the commission for four days. He says the days will be the 23rd, the, 20, the 22nd, 23rd, 28th, and the 29th of April, 2021, he says he will be testifying in his capacity as the president of the country, hashtag state capture inquiry. So as expected, right, the news of the president, uh, of President Ramaphosa's appearance before the Zona Commission sets social media ablaze. And this is what they had to say. Umzone uh, Lamani is saying, sounds like a whitewash of sorts. If DCJ Zondo was serious about the truth and mandate of his commission, he would be asking Mr. Ramaphosa to appear in two capacities. One, as implicated party, as deputy president of South Africa and chair of ESCOM war room, and two, as witness um, as president of South Africa. Mm. Um, there's another tweet that came in from uh, Mashi Amahle. Mm. Wow, okay. Coco Mchela, Brian Malefa, and Lynn Brown implicated Ramaphosa about events when he was deputy president. Unless there is current state capture happening now as president, that he wants to tell the commission about. So Jamie, what do you make of this? So I think it's it's pretty cool that the president will appear before the commission because you do want him to answer certain questions. You do want yeah. this commission to have credibility and the fact that a sitting president is willing to appear is important. I do think that reasonable questions are being asked about this in his capacity as president, because you, you remember as the commission has unfolded, certain people have implicated him in his different roles that he's occupied as a politician, yeah. whether his involvement with Glencore, whether the ESCOM uh, war room, be it his uh, involvement as chairperson of the deployment committee, or even the sitting vice president during the so-called nine wasted years. Mm -hmm. So if indeed we're gonna get to the bottom of state capture, it doesn't seem like it's going to be 
complete if he simply says i'm appearing here as president to dunk on the former president mm. and to say no it was the other guy i think if we're trying to really get down to the bottom of how does state capture operate how do corporates and politicians benefit mm. from these unhealthy relationships he has to fully go through the process and four days is a long time so i think that sure. if people make their applications to examine him as as afroforum we may get some clarity i mean jamie i'm so happy that you brought in the importance of this Commission, even to the public, for us to know and get to the bottom of things. But I can't help but wonder about the perception of the, the State Capture Commission of Inquiry, because if you think about it, there are some people who have been very controversial, um, who have been sitting there giving their testimony, answering some very difficult questions. Is there a potential here that people could view this as a bit of a dark cloud for the president to be, you know, hauled in front of the commission in this way? Well, it all depends really on what questions he gets asked because there is a concern. You know, if he gets some softball questions, people will say, you mm. see, it was a cover up. Mm. They are choosing their darling and appointing him. Mm. And those kind of uh, accusations have already been made. Right. So I think it is important for him to appear nonetheless because mm. he was there. You know, he was playing for the team. Mm. He was front row. He wasn't, you know, uh, uninvolved. He wasn't on vacation in Mauritius. He was physically there. He was physically involved. But I do think that the other question you speak to Mo is one uh, which is important is that what is going to be the ultimate perception of the commission because it has been dragged through the mud mm. through social discourse as well as by some of the people who have appeared or decided not to appear so ultimately one billion will have been spent but the question is will this be another TRC it's already beginning to look like many people will say we spent all of that money but we didn't find out anything mm. of substance mm. sure. I just think that he actually should pull what the other guy pulled. And they were sitting together at the king's funeral. He should just say, and easy. I know this guy personally. We were drinking beer last week. He's like, and easy. Thank you so much, Jamie. So the political tire just keeps coming in hot and heavy. Minister of Higher Education, Blades Amande, made it onto our timelines for some rather controversial commentary during his brief with Parliament's Higher Education Committee. Take a look at this. I am as concerned as you are. Every year, it's like a soapy now, you know? The bold and the beautiful. Every beginning of the year, there is instant. Does, it doesn't even play anymore. I don't know why Minister Nzimande always finds himself in this position. It happens all the time. Remember that, oh, else students will fall. <laughs> this is exactly, it's just, it's not knowing when to make jokes and where not to make jokes. Like if he was with dad his jokes. friends, if he was with his friends and they're having dad jokes and some whiskey, that joke is fine. And ah, guys, frustrating. I mean, Jamie, I, I'm sitting here thinking, Given everything that's happening with Fees Must Fall and the plight of students across the country, I mean, what on earth is the minister saying here? Mm. I mean, to me, it's just unbelievable. Mm. I mean, this is not a joke. Somebody died the other day who yeah, was not even directly involved yeah. in the mess that happened in town because of SAPS. It's definitely not a joke. And I think the minister is consistently showing students the middle finger through the kind of rhetoric that he chooses to put across, you know, whether it is students must fall, whether it's this old and the beautiful stuff, because the context is such that somebody died, an innocent bystander died mm. as a result of the state trying to suppress students' protest for free education. People sleep in toilets, they sleep in libraries, mm. people don't have textbooks, they go hungry on campus. Mm. Some people are eating food from bins just to stay on campus and for you to trivialize something and say hey i see this movie every year i know how this movie goes don't even protest because you know we've already delayed the year that to me one leads to the question of how come under your leadership the same problem keeps showing up every right. year exactly. it's not an indictment right. only of the students it's also an indictment of you but definitely don't approach serious individuals because stu students are not just trivial people just chilling mm. they have serious agendas sure. they, they spend all of their 13 years and, reading and books that, and focused that, that, that is on the getting thing jamie that is exactly it mm. it's it's patronizing and yeah. it's almost like undermining our intelligence as a nation yeah. my goodness yeah. jamie Guys, thank you so much for your time yeah, Thanks guys, so I wish we had time to actually unpack this further. It just made me so tired. When we come back from break, Vodacom connects you with health with hashtag Dr. Kanyele. Don't go anywhere.
hashtag Zah on three. So do you have a, a medical concerns that you're not sure warrant a trip to the doctor? Vodacom's innovative uh, virtual doctor platform has all the medic, uh, medical answers right in the palm of your hands. This platform helps make all your medical consultations easier and safer because you don't need you to leave your home to get, ooh, excuse me, you don't need to leave your home to make sure that you are COVID-19 safe. It's time now for hashtag Ask Dr. Kanile brought to you by Vodacom. Good evening, Mzansi. It's your fave. Hashtag Ask Dr. Kanyile, brought to you by Vodacom. My name is Dr. Nogu Kanya Kanyile, and you have sent through your burning COVID-19 related questions. We have a WhatsApp this week, so let's take a look. The WhatsApp reads, Hi, Dr. Kanyile. My name is Mazwi Bengu. I work at a call center, and I'm afraid of contracting COVID. What can I do to boost my immune system from home? Mazvi, that's a very important question. There are so many things you can do, which includes supplementing your immune system with vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc. You can get these as over-the-counter supplements at your local pharmacy, and you can also take them from food sources, such as strawberries, lots and lots of orange things like oranges or citrus fruits, and also healthy fruits and vegetables in your diet. It's also important while you're working to maintain good social distancing and personal hygiene practices such as wearing your mask, making sure that your hands are sanitized, and if you need to, wash your hands regularly. Thank you so much for such a great question, Manzwi, and I hope that you get the information you need. For anyone else at home, if you have any other questions, please contact the virtual consultation platform brought to you by our BFFs at Vodacom. That's all we have time for on Hashtag Ask Dr. Kanyile. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you very much, Dr. Kanyile. We appreciate you so much. I mean, technology has played a big part in protecting everyone's health. Connect to Vodacom's virtual doctor portal for all your COVID-19 related health and medical concerns. I mean, this is another way that Vodacom is keeping Zanti connected by using its innovative solutions to help even in the health sector. Mm. And that's how we've come to the end of another exciting episode of Trending Essay right here on SABC3. We are not on your screens tomorrow due to Bafana Bafana. Yes, and please, oh, boys. Oh, put me voice here, Sama. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, make it worth our while, Bafana Bafana, please. We're fully behind you. But we're going to be watching you too, so make it worth our while, please. Speaking of really cool things worthwhile, the competition I'm running on my Twitter page, I'm announcing the winner tomorrow. I'll be live on the Training Essay Instagram page. You want to see you on? Come through tomorrow. I'll keep you posted on my tweets as well. Okay, I'm trying to be patriotic, so I won't say anything about Bafana Bafana. Join us again on Friday, same time, same place, with a different sort of madness. We'll be giving away a Samsung smartphone with five gigs of data on our Win Big with Vodacom Prize giveaway. So make sure you are glued to our social media platforms. Do you have a jersey? Jersey for what? Bafana Bafana. Do you have a <laughs> Why are you baiting me to say something unpatriotic? I'm just asking, you have, you have a thing for everything. Do you? Good you night, do. South Africa. I'm not going <laughs> to answer that. <laughs>